So there seems to be this misconception that color grading S-Log3 footage is super difficult and very time consuming. And of course, depending on what you want to achieve, it could be. But in this video, I'll show you how to color grade S-Log3 super fast and without LUTs. Guys, I love my Sony a7S III. I've been playing around with it for a few weeks now and it looks amazing, especially S-Log3. But to get those great results, you absolutely positively have to make sure to get the exposure right. It's a mistake a lot of people make when shooting in S-Log3. I'll link one of Gerald and Dunn's videos on exposing S-Log3 in the description. So make sure to check it out because exposure is key here. Okay, now usually I color grade and color correct all my footage with Film Convert Nitrate. It's a plugin that gives me great results super fast. I can get different looks and it doesn't destroy the footage because it uses the log gamma curve. This is an S-Log3 clip graded with Film Convert. It looks a bit moody but that's what I was going for because it was shot in a forest on a cloudy day. And of course, it gives your footage a filmy kind of look, but you can dial it down so you get a nice natural looking image. Nothing too crazy, that's exactly why I use it. Easy to use and great looking footage. Now, manually grading S-Log3 takes a bit longer, but not that long. I'll show you how you can get a similar look in 10 minutes or less. I'm using DaVinci Resolve. But you can also do this in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, no problem. Even though I do think that in DaVinci Resolve it's easier, but I'm not sure, so let me know. And also, just so you know, I'm using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and the free version doesn't support 422 footage, so the clips I'm using are 10-bit 420. Okay, now let's do it. So the first thing we need to do before we start color grading is color correct. That means getting the image to a nice neutral looking starting point. There are a few ways to do that. First, just start tweaking the image. It's not the best way to start, but I'm going to show you anyway. So I have my S-Log3 clip and I've created three nodes, one for each adjustment. First thing we need to do is get the exposure right and also add some contrast. So make sure you have the waveform visible here and then pull the shadows to the right. In the waveform you can see how the shadows drop down. I don't want them to go all the way to zero, something like this. Same for the highlights, pull them to the left and again I don't want them to go all the way up. These spikes here are the white areas in the sky, I want them to go somewhere around 900. It still looks a bit too bright now because the footage is overexposed by two stops, so let's bring down the midtones. Something like this. I think that looks okay. You can see in the waveform here that I haven't crushed any blacks or blown out any highlights. Next, I'm gonna add saturation. And let's start at around 70. Remember, we can always go back to adjust any of these nodes. Then I'm going to adjust the color temperature because I feel the image is too warm. Something like this. And that's basically it for this clip. I think it looks like a good base to start color grading. Okay, but now let me show you a better way to do it. And that's by using a color space transform to bring my clip into the Rec. 709 color space. You might have heard of Rec. 709. It's the standard camera encoding color space for HDTV, but also internet video players can handle Rec. 709. Same goes for YouTube. But please do correct me if I'm wrong. The thing is, what color space you should use depends on what the project is for. For a movie that's going to be projected in a movie theater, it's not going to be Rec. 709. And if it's for Ultra HD, you might want to use Rec. 2020. And then we're not even talking about HDR. So when you're starting out now, just stick to 709. Okay, I have four nodes here. The second one is the color space transform. Let's do that first. Go to open effects and add a color space transform. Input color space is S gamma 3 dot cine. The gamma is S log 3. And here I could leave this on use timeline because my project is set to Rec. 709. If not, then you should choose here Rec. 709 and gamma 2.4. The problem now is that some of the highlights are blown out. The sky here, the nose, you could bring that all back manually. The information is all there. 
But the easiest way is to turn on luminance mapping. There, looks a lot better. Then in the first node, I'm going to bring everything down in the waveform by lowering the offset to let's say something around this. And that's because the footage was overexposed, which it should be for S-Log3. The image looks still too bright, so let's fix that in the third node with the curves. Something like this. Yeah, looks great. So again, in the waveform, all the detail is still there. We haven't lost any blacks or highlights. So again, a great starting point for color grading. And if we compare both techniques now, for me, the second one, it looks better, especially the skin tones. In the first clip, I still see those typical Sony colors, but it's subjective, you know? Now, you could also replace the color space transform with a Rec. 709 LUT from Sony. I get pretty much exactly the same result if I use a LUT instead of the color space transform, but I do prefer to use the transform. Okay, now let's try to match our clip with the clip that I graded with Film Convert Nitrate. First off, let's add some contrast. And also, I feel it's too warm, so temperature down. I also think the shadows should be a little bit darker, a bit more contrasty, something like this I guess. That's already starting to look really good. I still see a difference in the greens here, so they should look a bit more yellow I think. We can do that here in the HSL adjustments, hue versus hue click on the green, then open up these points a little bit and change the hue of the greens. Then let's check the skin tones. Use the qualifier to make a selection of the face and we can tweak that selection down here. And you can use shortcut shift H to see the selection. Now for this image, I don't mind that a little bit of the background is also selected, but that also depends on the image of course. Then let's make the selection softer here in Denoise. Okay, and once you have the selection, open the vector scope and check if the skin tones are on the skin tones line. That's this line right here. You might have to turn on that line in the settings. Now, because we have a part of the background selected, you should add a power window over the face so that we can look at just the skin tones. So around power window over the face, and it looks like the skin is a tad too red. So let's fix that by adjusting the offset. Let's turn off the round power window. Now, you could also combine the power window with the qualifier and then track the power window so it follows the face, but that would take us way too far now. So let's turn off the power window for now and then go to color wheels and push it towards yellow ever so slightly. And finally, I'm going to bring the gamma down because I feel like the contrast in the background is not the same. Let's also take a bit of the warm tones out of the shadows. And last but not least, I'm going to desaturate all the reds in the image. And let's leave it at that for now. It's not perfect yet, but this was our log image and this is the final result. I think it looks pretty good. But this could also be just the beginning, of course. You could work on this for hours. This still looks pretty natural, but you could make it look like anything you'd want. You know, I chose to preserve all the detail here, but maybe you want some harsh contrast and crush those blacks. That's fine. 
A lot of this is personal preference. What do you like more, bright reds or more orangey reds? But these are some of the basics you should know to start color grading. And that's it guys, that's all you need to do to color grade S-Log3 footage and get a nice natural looking image. I hope it helps. If you've enjoyed this video, maybe give it a thumbs up because that helps me. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.